Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day today. I know I cannot complain. Uh, this video, of course, is going to be for all of you that do either DoorDash or, for that matter, uh, you work in the gig economy, rather it be full-time or part-time. This video is for you. And I would love for you guys to interact in the comments section uh, on this video because not only will it help me, but I also believe they will also help other people that are considering getting into the gig economy. Now, I've been door dashing pretty hard this past week. Now, of course, I'm not going to be caught every time I dash. I mean, I might record a few times out of the week when it, in, in concerns of door dashing because I mean right now I do not have my own internet services up here in Indiana because I don't have all my stuff up here and I'll get to that later of the reason why that is but anyways uh, I don't I mean like recently, when I've been uh, out here dashing, uh, there's been, I mean, when I first started back dashing, after not dashing for, for a week, give me one second here, yeah, after not dashing for a week, when I decided to get back to dashing, Uh, rather than giving me a amount of money that I would make per dash, like I might do, like let's say a dash comes up, they want to pay me uh, $4, I could immediately at that point make a decision. Do I want to take this load or do I not want to take this load? But recently, I've been getting in a lot of orders to where I get paid by the hour. And... Uh, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, at, at first, they started me off at 11 and a quarter an hour on average, and then it went up to 12, and just yesterday, it went up again to 13.50. So, what I want to know from you folks is, uh, how many of you are getting orders to where you're only to where you're being presented an hourly uh an, an average hourly wage as opposed to strictly being paid by the load and uh now i'm gonna go ahead and also assume that when they average your pay by the hour uh you're probably making a little less money like that as opposed to them paying you by the load because you know door is like any other business they're going to try to get the most amount of work out of you for the least amount of pay nothing new it is what it is it's business but i'm just curious how many of you have been getting those type of uh, orders and another thing i'm curious about is whether you're door dashing or you're working any other gig app uh now I've heard a lot of negative stuff about uh, about Spark. I can't confirm it one way or another because I never worked Spark. I have it on my phone, but uh, honestly, I was getting ready to work Spark because when I first signed on the Spark, I was thinking I would just pull up in the back of the store, and then the and then the Walmart workers would come out, you know, they'll load all the groceries into my vehicle. And then I simply drive to the customer's house. But then when I, I mean, this was in Alabama. I mean, I was going to work my Spark app when I was in Alabama. But then the Walmart that I went to, it was one of those type of deals to where I had to go in and actually do some shopping. And I'm going to be honest with you folks. I mean, I am not a fast person. I'm just not. And I hate shopping for other people. I'm going to be honest. I hate it. Why do I hate it? Because a lot of times uh, there might be an item that you're not able to find. 
and if you're not able to find it then you might have to go around and look for an employer to help you out and if it's still not available then you then you have to communicate with the customer and then try to find a replacement item because sometimes a customer might be like okay well buy me you know pick this up instead I mean, to me, shopping for other people is a huge pain in the ass. I don't like doing it. I'll do it if I have to, but if I got other options, I'll take those instead. So how many of you that currently work gig work and you've been doing it for at least three months or longer? How many of you out there feel that the apps you're working are playing with your money? I mean, they're they're playing with your money, basically. Now, I I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm starting to feel more and more that many of your apps, such as DoorDash, you know, they're starting to play with people's money. You know, they're not wanting to pay drivers what drivers ought to make. I mean, when you take into consideration the fact that you're burning up your own, your 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 driving your own vehicle, you're burning up tons of gas. And, I, and especially for DoorDash, there's a lot of times you go into questionable neighborhoods. So sometimes your safety could even be on the line. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie to you folks. I mean, like I told you guys before, I began doing gig work full time because I enjoyed the freedom of not having to be tied down to a regular nine to five. But. You know, there's a part of me that, at least for now, I might go back to a 9 to 5. Not forever, but maybe for, I don't know, a few years to save up some money until I get enough money to do something else, which I thought about doing, but I can't do it right now because I don't have the money to do it right now. So, you know... I, I thought about going back to a nine to five just for a little bit, of, just for maybe a year or two, just to get my money back up. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, folks. I mean, there's all kinds of gig channels out here that might tell you, oh yeah, they do gig work, they're making crazy money, blah blah blah. And you know what? If that, if if, if any of those people are being honest and they're telling you the truth, you know what? Congratulations, I'm happy for them. But with me. I'm making I'm making some money, but it's not anything that I personally would write write home about. Like by the time I factor in the amount I would have to hold back for taxes and and gas and wear and tear on the vehicle, and then sometimes you get uh, orders to where you can't find the person's address, especially if they're if they're in an apartment complex. Or even if they're in a house, they don't got their address listed. I mean, you can't see their address. And then when you go and you call the customer, the customer doesn't answer the phone. You text them, they don't respond. It's just, you know, so in order, that may, that should have only took five to ten minutes. Now it ends up taking uh, a half hour because you're messing around trying to get in touch with the customer. You got their stuff in your vehicle and you're trying to get it delivered in a timely manner that way you can make your money so i'm pretty sure many of you that have done gig work for any amount of time have been through that type of stuff and for me it's real frustrating and the more i get out here in doordash the more i'm starting to feel as if the money i'm making i mean yeah i do enjoy the freedom so to speak but at the same time, I also recognize the importance of having a certain amount of money set aside to where I can invest and put aside for my retirement. Because, you know, I'm not going to be out here working forever. At least not the way I'm working right now. I mean, I'm going to need to have a nice little nest egg for retirement. Along with home repairs, vehicle repairs and replacement and all that fun stuff medical expenses that will come up eventually i mean you know i try to be as realistic and practical as i can when it comes to how i choose to live my life i would love to come up on this platform and tell you guys everything is going good 
my money, my, my stacks of fat, everything good. I'm living a life. But sometimes when I, the, the more I do DoorDash or any gig app for that matter, the more I feel as if many of these companies are playing with my money. And they're playing with your money. And they're doing that because they know there's a lot of people out here that, for whatever reason, they need to work that type of work. Either A, they don't want to, like myself, if we can help it, we don't want to go back to a 9 to 5. Or B, they're working a 9 to 5, but due to inflation and everything being crazy expensive, you got a lot of people that work in these gig apps because it's a wonderful side job. It's a wonderful second source of income. Whenever you feel like working, you just, you just log on and you go to work for the most part. So I feel due to the easy access to uh, earning some money with these gig apps, due to many people recognizing that, about working gig apps, a lot of these get a lot of these companies are taking advantage of that, and they're therefore playing with people's money, and not paying drivers what what drivers ought to be earning. And I don't consider myself to be one of these individuals that are that are super entitled. I I I I consider myself to be a practical person. So. Yeah, again, for those of you that have been working gig work for at least three months or longer, drop a comment below. How do you feel? What's going on in your market? Do you feel the same way I feel? Do you think I'm wrong for feeling the way I feel? Are you doing good? Drop a comment below and obviously be honest. I mean, don't be coming up on this channel advertising for these people. I mean, if you're doing good, you're doing good. If you're not, you know... By all means, drop a comment. But yeah, that's how I feel about right now. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, people. I'm, I, I mean, I'm kind of contemplating on getting myself a nine to five. That way, I can make some better money, and and I can, you know, I can make some better money, and then maybe on my days off, I'll pick up a day or two and and do some door dashing obviously even if i did get a day job just like i used to on my time on my days off i would still work on this channel and drive around like i've been doing and produce more videos so anyhow in a nutshell that's basically what's going on with me when it comes to work so, like I said, drop a comment below. Let me know what's going on with you. For those of you that have been doing gig work for three months or longer. And on that note, stay blessed. And, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Folks, I just want to show you something real quick. I just got an order. See? See, my dash has been paused. Because, look. I'm going to show you guys something. I'm going to press the dash button again. Look at what happens. It's not letting me do nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot my phone and redo this app. Alright folks. I just got my first order. It was for Papa John's Pizza. It's a, it's for, it's a double, really it's a double order. And I'm going to be making a total of uh, $12. Take the next right onto North Keystone Avenue. And my first customer is 3.6 miles, 10 minutes away. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Burlington Avenue.
next left onto Burlington Avenue. And I just want to let you guys in on something about DoorDash. Now, before I accepted this order, there were a total of three orders that I declined. Because the first two orders, in half a mile, turn right onto Broad Ripple Avenue. The first two orders. Uh, they were paying me an average of 11 25 an hour and eh, I don't know. I just didn't feel like working for 11 25 an hour uh, Here in Indianapolis I mean I've accepted those type of orders throughout the week, but today you know what I was in a I was in one of those type of moods to where I was gonna kind of push the envelope a little bit with DoorDash so I had two orders for 11 and a quarter. I declined both of them. After the second decline, I was kicked off the app and I had to reschedule myself. So, you know, Indianapolis is a fairly busy market. So fortunately, I was able to reschedule without any issue. So I rescheduled, got back on. And as soon as I got back on, I got another order and it was another order for 11 and a quarter an hour to pick up 16 items at Myers. Like I told you guys before, I don't like shopping. And plus it's only paying me 11 and a quarter, so I declined it. And when I declined that order, now, at least for now, rather than getting orders that pay by the hour, now I'm getting orders that pay by the load. Take the next right onto Broad Ripple Avenue. Then turn left onto Evanston Avenue. So I don't know if I'm gonna do better getting paid by the load or if I'm gonna do worse. I, I don't know, I'm about to find out. Turn left onto Evanston Avenue. But I thought just for the sake of uh just for educational purposes for myself and for those of you that watch this type a quarter of quarter mile turn right onto Kessler Boulevard East Drive and for those of you and for those of you that watch this type of content I will go ahead and experiment and see what happens when I choose to decline orders a certain number of times I mean cuz you know I hear stuff from other people that work gig apps or what happens to them, but I wanted to see what would happen to me. So in a nutshell, that's what happened to me. So yeah, it is true that when you decline twice in a row, you get Take kicked. The next right onto Kessler Boulevard East Drive. It, it is true that when you decline two times in a row, you do get kicked off the app. Now, if you're in a larger market, like where I'm at, continue on Kessler Boulevard East Drive for three quarters of a mile. I would say, in most cases, you can log back on and you'll be good to go. But for those of you that are in smaller markets and you decide to decline twice in a row and you get kicked off your app, uh, it might be a day, that, you know, it could equal a day without pay for you unless you log on and work another app or you got some other type of stuff you can do for money. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you folks. So, you know, when you when you when you scroll through YouTube or Instagram or whatever the case, and you hear other uh, gig work 
gig workers talk about how they... In a quarter mile, turn left onto Carrollton Avenue, Guilford Avenue. And you hear how other dancers be sitting around declining odors half the day. I mean, that could be true, but sometimes I find that to be a bit... I, I find some of that. But sometimes when people say that, I'm a bit skeptical. I think some of those people are doing the same thing they're doing. They're trying to make a buck. They're trying to make a living. And, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to take whatever. They're going to take it how they get it. And I don't think some of these other drivers are declining as many orders as they claim to be declining. Take the next left onto Carrollton Avenue. Guilford Avenue, then slight right onto Carrollton Avenue. Take the next right onto Carrollton Avenue. Yeah, so for those of you that are looking... In a quarter mile, turn right onto East 57th Street. So for those of you that are looking at joining DoorDash specifically, uh, this is going to be a very important video for you to watch. Because it, tell, it, it it exposes a little bit of the truth, not none of that, not none of that bullshit that some of these other people be talking. So if you if you live in an area to where your market is smaller and you're able to get on the door dash in that particular area just bear what i just told you in mind take the next right onto east 57th street then turn left onto north college avenue just bear what i just told you in mind just keep that in mind take the next left onto north college avenue Right now, I am working out of the Broad Ripple area, which, as typical, that could change later on. They might, you know, that could change. I could be out of, later on, I could be working out of Lawrence or uh, the Cumberland area. But right now, I'm working out of the Broad Ripple area of Indianapolis. I'm going to jump off. I'm going to holler at y'all in a minute here. Folks, I just got an extra order for Dunkin' Donuts, which was just down the street from my first delivery for uh, Pop for my, I think it was Papa John's delivery. I still got one more person to deliver to for that order, but I picked up a new delivery from Dunkin' Donuts. North on North College Avenue toward East 49th Street, then turn left onto East 49th Street. 
Turn left onto East 49th Street. Take the next left onto East 50th Street, then turn left onto Broadway Street. See, I, I picked up a new delivery for Dunkin' Donuts. I'm gonna take care of that. And then I got- 1,000 feet, turn left onto 52nd Street. Then I gotta get the other order delivered for the other uh, piece of delivery that I picked up. Like I said, I think it's Papa John's, I forgot. Take the next left onto 52nd Street. But this delivery is paying me $6. The one I just picked up from Duncan, and the customer is going to be uh, 1.2 miles away, four slash four minutes away. So it's not a bad drive. Turn left onto North Capitol Avenue. Turn left onto North Capitol Avenue. Street.
Take the next right onto West 49th Street, then turn right onto Graceland Avenue. Take the next right onto Graceland Avenue, then your destination will be on the right. Alright folks, I'll get with you in a minute. Head west on Westfield Court West. Folks, I just picked up uh, another order from Tomo, Tomo, I don't know how to pronounce it. You can see it on the screen. It's paying me uh, $7. The customer is four miles away slash nine minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. Take the next right onto North Keystone Avenue. Continue on North Keystone Avenue for three quarters of a mile. Turn left onto East 80th Street. Take the next left onto East 80th Street.
In a quarter mile, turn left onto Westfield Boulevard. Turn right onto Westfield Boulevard. Take the next right onto Guilford Avenue.
Folks, I got two orders I just picked up. One order, of course, is from Wendy's. And another order I picked up before I came here was Panda Express, which is just down the street from here. And I got two customers to deliver to for a total of $15. My first customer is going to be four minutes away from here. Turn left onto East 86th Street. Continue on East 86th Street for one mile.
All right, folks. I got the Panda Express order delivered. Now I got to deliver the other order from Wendy's. Turn left onto North Meridian Street. Hey folks, how you doing? Uh, I thought I would go ahead and and leave uh, Indianapolis and do a few deliveries here in Noblesville, Indiana. So I'm here in Noblesville now. Uh, I just picked up an order from a Tex-Mex restaurant. For those of you that don't know what that means, that basically means it's the Texas version of Mexican, of Mexican cuisine. Some people like it, others don't. Me personally, I was I'm not, I'm not that big on uh, that type of cuisine, so it don't really make me much of a difference. I mean, my attitude is, hey, I'm getting paid to do this work, so I'm doing this work. So I got a delivery here. Uh, Take the next left onto Cherry Street, then turn right onto Indiana 37 North. My customer is 7.9 miles away, 60 minutes away. Turn right onto Indiana 37 North. If, if I can remember correctly, I think I'm going to be making like $16 on this one. I mean, it's, it's okay, you know, it's, 
I wish it was a little more, but I'll take 16. I mean, there was a couple of orders that came before this one that I rejected. So, I was sitting here in Noblesville for 10 minutes before an order came up that I chose to accept. on Indiana 32 West for one and a half miles.
onto Westfield Road. Exit the traffic circle onto Westfield Road. In 800 feet, at the traffic circle, continue straight to stay on Westfield Road. Oh, another thing I want to mention is, although uh, I'm working out of Noblesville, uh, sometimes when I get an order, I might have to drive into some of the neighboring communities out here, such as uh, Fishers, Westfield, and sometimes Carmel. Traffic circle, take the first exit onto East 161st Street. Continue on East 161st Street for one and a half miles.
quarter mile, turn right onto Brook Hollow Drive. Turn right onto Brook Hollow Drive. Traffic circle, take the fourth exit and stay on Brook Hollow Drive. Exit the traffic circle onto Brook Hollow Drive, then your destination will be on the right. All right, folks, I just picked up my order from Little Caesars. My customer is five miles away, uh, 11 minutes away, five miles. So we're going to take care of this. Next right onto Logan Street. In a quarter mile, turn right onto State Route 38 West, Sheridan Road. Next right onto State Route 38 West, Sheridan Road. on State Route 38 West for three miles.
left onto Little Chicago Road. circle, take the first exit onto East 191st Street, Maple Grove Way. circle onto East 191st Street. Continue on East 191st Street for one mile. right onto Schofield Farms Boulevard, then turn right onto Hopview Lane. Turn right onto Hopview Lane. In 1,000 feet, your destination <coughs> will be on the left. 